three quick small questions. The yes. first one is whether it be the 2G scan or whether it be even yesterday's Time Snow show, <laughs> show, I saw that you know what you took was a very legal position. Yes. Now, your father was a brilliant statistician. You are a trained economist. I have read your entire biography on the Caravan magazine. You are not a trained lawyer. But the points which you articulate are something which is beyond most of the lawyers which we commonly come across. So my question is, where did you get this legal acumen? First. <laughs> the second is, the second question is, you are able to multitask, which many of us in this generation are finding it difficult. Like whether it be the 2G scam, simultaneously you are targeting say the Samudran project, petitioning the Supreme Court. You come up with some views on Islamic banking which nobody has thought of. I want to know how you are able to do that. The third thing is, I want you to educate the audience very quickly on Islamic banking, which has now emerged in the non-banking financial corporation sector, and what is its implications for us. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, on law, uh, two events in my life uh, gave me this opportunity. First, I married a lawyer. <laughs> My wife is a lawyer, so at our library everything is available, so the infrastructure is not a problem. Second thing is that I found that many politicians who didn't like me were using lawyers to file defamation cases against me. And that mean, meant going to court, hiring lawyers, that costs money. And uh, it began with Mr. Ram Jitmalan, who did it for, I think, Ram Krishna Hilde. And uh, so they filed, he filed four defamation cases against me, and it was quite painful. So I learned the law. I say, I'm a professor, so learning is not a difficult task. And I started, like you learn swimming by jumping into the pool. I went to the court and started arguing. In the beginning, the judge tried to correct me and tell me, you know, judges also feel sympathetic to a petitioner person. So I learned in the process. I won all the four defamation cases. <laughs> and now nobody dares to find defamation cases against me. <laughs> because when you, somebody finds a defamation case against you, he has to come first on the box. And you cross-examine him. And the real defamation starts then, when you start crossing them <laughs> and bringing it up. So, uh, then what happened is, uh, the question uh, that created interest in me, and then I began to see people, uh, there was this land problem which Mr. Hegde had, on which I filed a case and he had to resign. Uh, like that, I started picking topics, it's just started coming. But of course, at 4 a.m. in the morning, I do Saraswati Puja, maybe that is why. Now, the second question was multitasking. You can always multitask if you follow Gita, which means that you must genuinely believe that you have freedom in this life only for action. The fruits of that, the fruits of that action are not in your power. You will get it in different form. But that's what Krishna says. You, you work that into your mind, stress will go completely. Then you get the, you do multitasking. Most of the problem with multitasking is the stress. You see, what will happen if this goes wrong? What happens if I lose this? That has to go out of your mind. Then you can work. Your brain can accommodate a lot of subjects. It's not a problem at all. Uh, on the question of Islamic bank, under the law, which was laid out when I filed that petition, uh, the Reserve Bank Act, Reserve Bank of India Act, RBI Act, does not permit Islamic Bank because it imposes two kinds of conditions. One, uh, no interest. Interest, charging interest is compulsory. And it is a fraud actually. 
because they don't charge interest. But if you want to take a loan to buy a house, they will not give you the loan. They will say, tell me which house you want to buy. And they bank will buy the house and put a surcharge and give it to you. So it is an indirect way of collecting interest. So it is a complete fraud. Uh, so uh, there is no, uh, no bank can exist without charging interest, so they charge it this indirect way. Under our reserve bank laws, banks cannot buy property. So it's illegal. But there is no bar on non-bank financial institutions. And that's what they're trying to come. But that will never work. Because Islamic banking means zero interest. So how can you have a non-bank financial institution without charging interest? So you can't come like that. So there is no scope for it to come. It will come all over the world but it will not come in India. Why I am against it is that if you have an Islamic bank and a Hindu goes and applies, the bank manager will say, no, uh, you don't satisfy this condition, this condition, this condition. <coughs> then he will privately come and tell you, you see, if you become a Muslim, then these conditions That is the danger we have seen in some countries. We can't allow it. Particularly in Kerala, where the margin is very thin. Uh, Hindus, I don't even know whether after the new census they will be majority. So, I don't want to facilitate conversion through this. And that's why I want. Secondly, Islamic bank bans giving loan to beauty parlor because it is against Sharia. You cannot um, uh, give loan to a butcher shop which does jhatka uh, meat. It has to be halal meat. So the Sharia concepts are built in, which is against Article 27 of our Indian Constitution. So there is no chance of Islamic bank coming. If you can come across any, let me know. I will go to court. And <laughs>